Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome to another Panel B podcast. I know you couldn't wait. We're back with our very fun Wednesday show. That means we will make picks Great. for Sunday. Kay. Steve's just hopping right in. We got Bukes. I'm here. We got Jules. He's finally here. Also here. Julian's kind of doing the old dotting himself with a napkin like you would do when you had gym class, like fourth period in the middle of the day, and now all of a sudden you're just a sweaty mess for the rest of the day. I ran through a construction zone to get here five minutes late. Dedication. Probably would have been ten minutes if I stayed in my Uber, which went the wrong way and took me through a tunnel. After he did the go tea the broke way. down on me on Monday and... There was some kind of race the last time I you tried to drive. You know what's amazing, so three though? Three different but, ways but, I've tried but, to get here. None of them have worked. But I've picked the wrong day for each. The large money teas, um, parlay Heavy hit. favorites money line parlay it's hit. It's back. He's and back. doesn't it, matter it what started off he gets a, It here. started off a heater as well. Well, we will see if that carries over later on. It's, we'll an, 11 also and one, do... it's an 11-1 week, Bucks. Oh, good. So and now we're only over, two nights in. So now over your last 50, you're what? 11 and 39? Wow! No, quick we're math. getting there though. <laughs> high five! What quick am I high fiving for? Uh, you did correct math. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's... I mean, I I went to school. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so fun stack later on as well. We'll do the exact opposite of when we did values bargain bin stacks. We're now doing treat yourself stacks later mm. on uh, in the show. But we start with a bit of breaking news, um, as is tradition, of course on panel B, reports are that David Ross will be hired as the Cubs manager. How thrilled are we about this? It's not surprising given that he was like a special assistant to the GM and Ooh. seems to be quite the likable guy and is a catcher. So mm. give him a shot, right? I'm so sti- tired of this stupid trend. Which is? Any bum off the street <laughs> can just come in and be a manager of a team. So Rocco Baldelli, he's fine. I don't mind him. He's a Twins manager. We like the Twins. <laughs> Except in the post. Aaron Boone. Why? Because he hit a home run in 2003 against the Red Sox. Oh, you know what you're doing. Come on in. Be the manager. David Ross. He hit the g- home run in game seven. Meaningless. Big deal. They were winning anyways. But he hits the home run. And they're like, what a hero. Well, but Thank the only God. difference shh, about. Shh, 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 shh. He has no coaching experience. He was a special assistant to the GM. You know what special assistants do? Hey, go get my coffee. Hey, can you go prep the meeting room? We have people coming in. Hey, go tweet about people for not starting Chase Edmonds in fantasy. Yeah. Some dork in glasses just out of high school, you know, college. Doofus. David Ross has no experience, but now he's going to manage the Cubs, a historic franchise. I thought I was angry this morning. Well, dork in glasses stupid. is kind of who's it's leaving, stu- What right? qualifications do we but have? But isn't the difference with David Ross compared to, like, an Aaron Boone that he's, like, a well-known everyone's favorite clubhouse guy. Oh, he was oh, also he was also a catcher, which yeah, oh, as good. a player so, you manage a little bit more in the game, I guess. You know what I mean? Okay, manage so be pitchers. a pitching coach. If it, be a pitching coach. Maybe Why be a ha- manager? Maybe he has been a pitching coach at oh, some but, point in the past. I don't oh, know. Oh, but everybody likes him. Oh, hooray. We're all friends in the clubhouse. I think that like ma- I think that counts friends. for I think that counts for something in baseball because for the most no. part, like what does a baseball manager do? You, you just yeah, like you, know your you players. Do. When do you take them in and out? You Who's manage. a good lineup? If I was a manager, I'd just look at BVPs before every game and be like, all right, we're going this guy, this guy, this guy. It's oh, not but that we're hard. All friends. Let's sign Ichiro again because he had a really <laughs> yeah. good BVP ten years ago. Yeah. Um, like you're not supposed to be friends. Like your boss is not your friend. Are you my boss? You're okay. Like. <laughs> But that's not that's not the point. You go in there to manage a game, what's best for the team, not because like oh we'll go hang but out. But I, fe- I feel like as it's a, a, a guy that's been a, a trustworthy catcher for a lengthy career on a some very good trustworthy catcher. What does that mean? Here's it means that he was catching big games with. Ooh. Uh, like I think that that involves managing. Oh okay. He I think that involves. I think that involves decision making. You that know is a traditional route that catchers would be better managers because they both think about pitchers and hitters a lot more. Uh, here's why I actually, though, kind of agree with Steve, although I will do so in a far less gifable uh, manner. <laughs> oh, uh, damn! Shouts out to the producers. <laughs> keep an eye out. Time code those. Uh, and that is that well first off i'm not sure how much i think mlb managers is like probably the least actual hands-on job that there is for the coaching wow. in the coaching tree of professional sports but 
also on top of that, like we usually see the pendulum swing the other way, right? Like you go with the the players' coach, the players' manager, if you will. That doesn't work out. Okay, now you go for the the hard ass numbers guy who's going to take no prisoners. They kind of stayed on the same side here, and what. You know, a lot of people thought when they were kind of breaking down what went wrong for the Cubs this season is that there was this kind of sense of entitlement in the locker room that, you know, they were still kind of resting on their laurels from a couple years ago. Uh, So, you know, maybe I'm painting too broad of a brush here and maybe he's going to come in and say, hey, look, that's not the case. You guys got to shape up Uh, to go with a guy who is kind of at least portrayed as a clubhouse guy, a player's guy. Uh, seems a little bit interesting to me and doesn't seem like something that might fix the problems or at least what were perceived to be the problems. Uh, Or it could be, hey, look, again, the Cubs are very talented. They're going to go out and win 100 games again, and And now he's going to get all the credit. That's the thing. They have all this talent. And that's why I think managers in baseball don't matter as much. I agree with that. that, But one, one other thing. So if it's not David Ross, you hate the David Ross hire, he's a nice guy, who do you want to hire? Like you want to hire that's not a my guy decision. that's going to be an a hole and you like scream at everybody that nobody likes. Like no, but who, I, I don't. If I was a, Cubs or a guy fan, with managerial experience, potentially. Like, if I was a Cubs fan, I would want somebody who has some experience. You're coming off a disappointing season. Like they didn't go out and make it in the playoffs. They didn't go out and have this unbelievable season. They're coming off a bad season, and now you're going to bring in a total green manager to manage. A huge franchise. But were they mismanaged? Is that why they missed the playoffs? Uh, I mean, the jury's out on Joe Madden. I mean, some people love him, some people don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, really... I, I, I don't follow the Cubs closely to be like, well, this was a mismanaged, this was a mismanaged. But I followed enough to go that David Ross has zero experience. <laughs> I do know that. But if you put a player like him, or a man, I'm sorry, a manager like him, on like the Giants – then that shows what type of manager you are. They don't have the talent. He could go out there and easily win over 100 games because of the talent. And it's, right. oh, David Ross is brilliant. When he's not. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm on the same page with Jenkins. Usually the way the narrative would go much. is like, oh, he's come in and created this, this culture of, uh, you know, everyone's not as tense anymore. Everyone's more relaxed. But that's what they were coming from. Relaxed. You know, usually you so baseball. what you do is you get the guy who comes in, he takes out the foosball table in the clubhouse. <laughs> um you know, he's going to come in and, and start instilling, you know, there's going to be a lot of acronyms that mean things about accountability. Uh, and and we'll see. Maybe that will be the way he ends up going. Obviously, like, you know, uh, you know, all we know are what people say about him. He has no experience. We have nothing to go off of. You know, all we do know is, yeah, it's a very talented group and a team that will always be uh, in a division that's going to be good, but you're never going to have like great teams. We talk a lot about how the NL Central is always so tough because there's like three teams who are close together, but there's never like a standout team. You're not in the same division as the Astros or the Dodgers no. that can run away with it. So uh, they'll be competitive. They should probably, I would think, be the favorites to win that division next year. Two years, think. Max. Two years. Yep. That's what you'll give them. They'll, they'll give him a second the year. They'll, they'll give him a second year because yeah. he hit that home run in the World Series. Oh, thank God. What would they have done without that home run? Next subject. Okay. Well, we are going to stick with baseball. <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to say I'm going to add it to my record or anything, but oh my God. shout out to, you know, if you did listen to me go with over one and a half runs in the first inning yesterday. Uh, but we have the Nationals out 1-0. Um, mm. Our theory that, uh, you know, the team with the momentum doesn't matter in the World Series, uh, they still got some momentum. They're still scoring a lot in the later innings and got to Garrett Cole, as uh, article up on DK Playbook written by one Julian Edlow, first time he's taken a loss in 19 starts. So, nice. because you wrote that article, you made research. a prediction, a bold prediction if it were. How do you see this one playing out tonight? Well, so first, when we did the podcast on Monday, I said that, you know, I don't, I don't know where, I don't think any of us necessarily made a prediction for game one for a score or a team. We just said it, it's quite a price on Scherzer, and that, yeah. that's intriguing. Um, but I also mentioned if Scherzer did get that win and the Nationals went up one nothing, that it might be a time to look at, at Houston on the World Series line. And they're, they're still on the Series line, minus 120, whereas Washington's even money. So Washington's still a dog. Mm. I'm scrapping all that, and I think that the Nationals are going to win this game. Um, 
Tonight. After tonight. So rather than, I mean, the Astros minus 120 for the series, <laughs> you're going to get a better price if you think they're going to win it if the, if the Nationals win this game. And why bet the Nationals to win the series at even money when you can just go tonight yep. on Strasburg, who's been so good? <clears throat> um, plus Strauss- 160. Yeah. Uh, plus 160 on Strasburg. Um, he has allowed four earned runs in his four postseason appearances. Uh, the last time he started at, at uh, Minute Maid was 2017, but he went six shutout innings with three hits. And then you have Verlander, who's come undone in his last three starts, giving yeah. up ten earned runs. And it's been because of the same problem we've seen all year, the home run, five home runs in those three starts. So uh, Verlander's got to bounce back here, like, or else <laughs> for the Houston yeah. Astros. And Strasburg's just been consistently grinding. So I will say one thing that... You know, Washington's bullpen did make that game last night much more interesting than it needed to be, and that's been the story on them all season. So, uh, much more confident in Strasburg uh, out pitching Verlander, I think, than anything. So, if you want to look at like the first five line, Washington plus one fifty on the first five, I think that's probably a little bit safer because the Astros need this game. They're going to use yeah. their bullpen every way they can to win this game. Um, so I think I like the the first five more, but I, I could definitely see the Washington Nationals winning this game. Yeah, it's you know tough that Verlander has been so shaky because in a vacuum he's probably the most one of the more reliable pitchers in baseball. But the home runs keeps creeping up, like Julian said, five thro- so far through twenty four and a third innings. It's a concern. Now I wouldn't say that the Nationals are like a power club. But then you look at somebody like Juan Soto, a lefty, going right, against mm-hmm. Furlander. Yeah. That's an issue. Like the the kid is absolutely on fire. And he had the two huge hits off of Garrett Cole last night, who really coming into this game looked unhittable. Right. Like through the entire playoffs, I, I would even dare to say the entire year. Like he had a couple duds here and there, but man, Soto looks like the real deal. He looks legit. And being a lefty obviously helps so much more. But then Rendon. Zimmerman showing some playoff magic there. It's um, I still like the Astros to win this series. I still think at the end of the day they're the more talented club. They're the more whole club. But that was surprising, and that's tough. What are we thinking if if the Nationals win tonight? So they go up two zero and they're going home. What's the price on the Astros to win the series then? Down zero two on the road. Plus one eighty two hundred. Wow. Yeah. And the other thing is, right. too, is that for a game three, no, what okay. is it? Granky? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. Granky in game three? Don't feel That's great about that. why you trade that. for him. You know? It is why, it is why you trade for him. Literally, that is the reason. Right. Um, and, yeah, I mean, to talk a little bit more, uh, more about Verlander, it's just when you get to the postseason, obviously, and the quality of opponent night in and night out is going yeah. to be what it is, your flaws are going to be uh, – they're going to shine bigger, and, and that has been the case. Now, if there's anyone who can – pull out you know a vintage performance it's going to be Verlander and com- completely yep. shut them down but uh you know offensively we got to see more from the Astros because it's it's a balanced lineup but their righties have been the only ones who have really shown up and yeah. when you're going up against you know I-, I would take them in game three against Corbin for that reason however when you're going up against Scherzer and now Strasburg who's you know with that curveball just so deadly against right-handed pitchers we- you need those lefties we've talked about Michael Brantley a lot already uh Jordan Alvarez just keeps getting bumped down the order because it's just the moment just seems to be a little bit too big for him uh, Did have two hits last night, though, okay. which was encouraging. Yeah, I- encouraging for sure. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you're still – obviously you're you're splitting hairs because it still yeah. was a close game last night. And all intents and purposes, it's going to be a close game again tonight. There's no reason not to think right. it. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you guys in that, like, obviously the momentum has, has been on the Nationals and the pitching matchup seems to be that as well. Yeah, and, you know – the other thing is, too, is that as the series goes deeper, it would feel like it would favor the Astros. Because with Corbin pitching last night, now he's lined up to pitch game four instead of game three. Say, is Corbin even going to be – is Corbin going to be a bullpen guy in this series? Because Annabelle Sanchez is pitching really well all of a yeah. sudden. Mm-hmm. Could be a game three guy. And then game four, can you go back to – Scherzer well, on short rest? Or if you're up two to one, then do you go to Corbin for a short outing? 
if they're up, I would feel like they would go to Corbin because he only ended up throwing an inning last night. Okay. So, you know, you can treat that as your normal bullpen. Yeah. You know, with the, he only threw 21 pitches. But the Astros have been so much better against lefties. So you get to Corbin, then we go back to, to, to Scherzer, who had to throw a lot of pitches early to get in that game. And if they can get Scherzer out again, now we're going to the bullpen, here we go. So yeah. I feel like the deeper this goes, it favors the Astros. Yeah. If they go down again tonight, the Astros, then we're in trouble here. If I you really want to get trouble. crazy, like betting Washington plus 160 tonight and then taking Houston on a on a plus 200 series line isn't that crazy. No. Because, like, Granky can win that game. He's going to be favored against whether it's whether it's Sanchez or Corbin. Yeah. He'll, be, he'll be favored. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, there, like if it's if it's Corbin in a in a game four, that doesn't set up well. And then they have to go a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of bullpen after that. Yeah. If Corbin doesn't do well, but would you panic and bring Scherzer in in relief? Because if you because if it all of a sudden you're up two to one and you yeah. use that we're ahead mentality and go Corbin, and then it's two two, right? Houston two two and th- that's a three game series with Houston favored all over again with home field advantage, right? Yep. All right. Sounds like we'll be a lot more to talk about There's going to be a Monday. good series. Yeah, hopefully it's still <laughs> going next Monday, and yeah. we'll have more to talk about. Uh, all right, let's talk a little bit about the Thursday night game. Uh, <laughs> I say we will talk a little bit uh, because I don't know how much there is to say. Um, <laughs> we'll see if Adam Thielen plays. I doubt it yeah. still. Um, he thinks he can. I think no it would reason. be unwise. Uh the same, not the same with Adrian Peterson. Sounds like he's just going to say he plays and that there's no institutional control in Washington. So if he says he's going to play, he's probably just going to play. Yeah, we'll not? see what happens. Chris Thompson, however, is not playing. So Wendell Smallwood will continue to see third down work and potentially Ooh. more for Washington. The spread is 15 and a half points. The over under, <laughs> though, is just 42. Uh, <laughs> Washington plus 700 on the money line. Vikings minus 910. So we'll talk to DFS as well, but let's start with the betting line. Um, are we looking at the spread or the over-under as maybe a way that we would lean tonight? Tomorrow, tomorrow night. Sorry. It's Wednesday. Game so Thursday. here's a trend uh, from Odd Shark. Since the start of the 2016 season, home teams on Thursday night from week eight on mm-hmm. are 18-4-3 and three against the spread. That's over 80%. Wow. Um, and if you take that sample back to 2009 for week eight on on the Thursday night team, uh, Thursday night games, home teams 47, 29, and 3, 62%. Um, so trends point to this being the time in the season where teams start to get worn down, and when you travel on that short week, you start underperforming more than, than when you're fresh. The issue here is we're dealing with 15 and a half points, so it's a little bit larger than <laughs> usual. Um, this could definitely be a 14-point game where the Vikings just, they don't have Thielen, they grind the ball with Cook, get out of there with an easy two-touchdown yep. win, and you're not even covering. Um, so it, it, it's kind of a, feels like a stay-away spot for me on the spread, just such a big spread on a short week. Um, but if you, I don't know. I would, <laughs> guns in my head, I would bet on the Vikings just because they're so much yeah. better and they're at home, but I, I don't need to bet on that spread. Let me uh, clarify for our audio listeners. There is no, nothing pointed at you. There's nothing inside. pointed we at will not. Head. We will not force <laughs> the issue if it is not there. Thanks. We'll see. Yeah, so, Steven, so, of your own free will, <laughs> <laughs> how do you see this game? So the Vikings are one of the best teams against the spread so far this season. They're 5-2. and two. And when they've covered the spread, um, they have the third highest margin, just under seven points. Fifteen and a half is a lot of points, even against a team like the Redskins. You know, you're not putting money down on a minus nine ten money line. That's just asinine. Uh, Fifteen and a half. It just I hate the totals like this. Like even when it was against the Dolphins when we had the Patriots game, I know they ended up blowing them out. It wasn't even a, a game, but there's just so many things that can go wrong. For that not to hit for such a large number, I mean, large number Patriots of Jets yeah. earlier, not the right. this one. Right, the, I was going to say Luke it's Falk more one. it's more trustworthy in yeah. a Patriots Dolphins type of matchup because those teams are so bad and the Patriots are are so good in these right. situations. But exactly, even then, you get a special teams touchdown and a yeah. backup quarterback pick six, and you're done. 
<laughs> were we I'm thinking that when Stidham went in? When Stidham went in on Monday night, is there a chance? Well, well that was <laughs> to hit that. that. We, we didn't have to sweat that one. That one was fine. <laughs> Jets team total under sixteen and a half. Thank you very much, Sam Darnold. That was very entertaining, um, and I, I didn't have to sweat a Pat's team total under. It was fun. If there's anything I'd probably be taking here, probably the under on forty two. I have no doubt the Vikings can put up the points. I don't think the Redskins can. Uh, there's not much to like about that on that team. So under 42 would be the only thing I'd be interested in. Spread's just too high for me. Not putting money down on minus 910. No value in plus 700 for the Redskins because there's no chance they win that game. All right, real quick on the DFS side, I'll throw out a, um, you know, a couple salary points that are interesting. Dalvin Cook being the most expensive as a flex at 1300 mm-hmm. uh, I think he's a guy you just have to fit in probably somewhere. Um, Cousins yeah. maybe less so at 12 uh, Diggs with potentially no Adam Thielen is 11. Vikings defense 6800 And I mentioned his name, you know, just, you know, Wendell Smallwood is $1,800. Like, with yeah. Chris Thompson likely not playing and Adrian Peterson banged up, Chris, Wendell Smallwood, at, I think, at $1,800 is, is kind of a free space. Yep. He's for your sure. pass catching back, you know, plenty of work, for sure. Anyone else that – any, any? – <laughs> <sighs> It's just such I'm an not ugly getting game. up for a Thursday night showdown. I think contest. that you, I think that you want to try and even Captain Cook at the 19-5 if you right, can, yeah. and then well, you've small got your, you've got your Smallwood, yeah. and you've got uh, potentially Vikings receivers, uh, Johnson, Odell B- B- Johnson, um, B C Johnson, Ola B C Johnson, B C Johnson, yeah, somewhat cheap. Uh, got more eight targets last thought, week, but you got eight targets last week. Yeah, mostly without Thielen, obviously. So I think that yeah, that makes sense. Because with the three of them, seventy five hundred for the rest of the year. That's fair. Laquan Treadwell is still on the Vikings. Yeah, Laquan, Laquan Treadwell still hasn't done anything in the NFL, so <laughs> one target all there. year. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. And of course, it was against the Eagles and went for fifteen yards. They suck. They're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Treadwell right comes in it all fifteen comes yards. Full circle. Leaves. <laughs> it all comes full circle. Well. Oh. Uh, Potentially a good segue. I don't know what your picks are, <laughs> mm. but Bukes, uh, let's look at the upcoming Sunday slate. Yep. Or you know, it could you, your bets could be baseball related. Your bets could be uh, you know Thursday night related. We know Julian's going to go into the college football scene and bore us all to death yeah. in a little <laughs> the bit. The heavy favorites money line parlay is strictly. NFL this week. Well, <laughs> folks, don't touch that dial. <laughs> and guess what? It actually hit last week. It did. Steven, sure though, did. we will start with you. Started um, an 11 and 1 hot streak, by the way. Okay. That We've doesn't heard count it. on this show. Like, you still have a long way to go to Not earn back the trust long. of everybody. Dude, this has been like a four week excursion of your coldness. Get lost. All right, times. all right, all right. We're not going back to that. You can go back to previous episodes if you want. <laughs> Bukes, who are your picks? Um, I talked about it a little bit on Monday. I'm sticking to it all the way to Sunday. So don't worry, I'm not going to change my mind. Cardinals are plus 10 against the Saints. I do like that line a lot. Um, I know the Saints have been playing really well. Teddy, all he does is cover spreads. Bridgewater, right? I, I just think it's too much. Mister Twenty Eight and Seven. ATS. I think it's too much. I think plus ten is. If this was seven or something, I'd side with the Saints. I didn't. I think ten is just too many points. So I'll take the Cardinals plus ten. Forty nine is at minus five and a half. Um, I know, obviously, McCaffrey. Kind of good. It's gonna be a good game. I know, but. I can understand why people want to side with the Panthers, obviously with McCaffrey, but we saw McCaffrey get shut down by a very good run defense early in the year against Tampa Bay. Um, he's someone that can be shut down. If the Buccaneers are able to do it, the 49ers defense has been run defense has been just as good as not if not better. So I think they have a legitimate chance to shut down McCaffrey, so I'll take them at minus five and a half. There you go. I don't have a I don't have a feel on that on that game yet, but a lot of times when a, a team, a, an undefeated team or a team that people like a lot are five-and-a-half-point favorites, it means that bookmakers don't believe in them because they're not at the six or seven. But I don't know what to think about the 49ers because I didn't think they would be this good and they keep overperforming. Yeah. So I, I just think that's a weird game. I think the Panthers are better than people think. 49ers are eventually going to lose but what's the weather report weird weird number yeah we'll have to find out (laughs) the weather before i make a play on that game um all right there is i believe there's only one road team that is favored this week uh road teams have been doing really well so far obviously you prefer 
getting points, but I am going to lay the points on Sunday Night Football four and a half with the Green Bay Packers against the Kansas City Chiefs. Janko is probably going to be taking the Chiefs plus four and a half, uh, uh, which would make me really happy to go head to head. I'm not buying oh. into Matt Moore in this in this spot. I uh, did not. It's not one of my two picks. Okay. I, it was in consideration though, and it would have been to go with the Chiefs. Yes, and it was um, not because I have faith in Matt Moore mm. as much as just the uh, you know the atmosphere at Arrowhead. Uh, defense coming off a really good performance. So the defense is definitely weapons. coming off a, a good performance, which I don't know if that's who that defense actually is, though. I think that might be that defense against Joe Flacco. Um, Fair. <laughs> I don't think they're scoring 25 DK points or whatever <laughs> yeah, they did yeah, yeah, leading yeah. the slate. I just think this week with the Packers being able to prepare for, for Matt Moore gives them a little bit more of an edge and I'm not expecting Green Bay to go off like they did last week against Oakland at home but no. be solid enough to to find holes in a in a Kansas City defense even though it's in a really tough place to play I just think better quarterback better defense it's not that many points I, I like this spot for the Packers we'll see also with Devontae Adams uh, yeah actually that, had a mm, good game and then got hurt which is a bummer yeah the, I, I won't let his status sway my decision but if he oh, wants to play that, that would be great yeah no. um i think it would move much if he's active no no maybe half a point yeah um probably not no because i think there's going to be question marks even if he plays how much he would play given yeah that yeah kind of injury. it, it would fair. be a half a point max type of thing um all right heavy favorite money line parlay oh, here we go Nobody's touching the points on Thursday night, but the Vikings are damn sure winning that game. <laughs> so we're starting there. <laughs> minus 9-10. Okay. Minus 9-10, you piece them all together, you get minus 120. This is how it works, Bucks. God. Minnesota Vikings. We're going across the pond to London. The LA Rams are not going to lose to the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> minus seven fi- minus 715. The logic is sound so far. <laughs> I enjoy this one because it somewhat goes against Bukes, even though there's a large middle here. The New Orleans Saints are going to beat the Arizona Cardinals at home, whether it's Teddy Bridgewater or Drew Brees. That's not really going against me. Well, there's a 10-point middle there. Yeah. I'm saying it, it could easily wind up in there, but I'm taking the opposite team as you. Um, the minus 435 Saints are the, uh, the biggest roll of the dice in the heavy favorites money line parlay this week. And then there's no way that the Patriots' defense isn't going to give Baker Mayfield fits. The Browns are not coming to Foxborough and winning that game. They're not good enough. The Patriots' defense is too good. Mm-hmm. Even if the Patriots have to grind that one out by, by seven, they're not going to lose that game. You put those four teams together, minus 120. <laughs> Let's do it two weeks in a row and get back on track because we started the season with three of them in a row. Three panel B picks. All right. So ass. But you can find them all on Twitter. <laughs> I look, was that like your word of the day toilet paper or something? Asinine, <laughs> you've said it like five times on this show. Have I? Yeah. Yeah, I heard on the radio this morning. I'm like, that's such a good word. <laughs> tell I me, who's, tell me word. who's busting it. I don't. I haven't. Uh, I haven't heard, read one of your articles yet today. I'm sure I'll see it chock full of <laughs> five times in there. No, I'll, I'll get it in there. Don't worry. Can I just make a quick note? Sure. I have these uh, blackout curtains in my room. Yeah, I just got. It's some the too. same material as your hoodie. They okay. look exactly the same. Do they feel the well, same? <laughs> chalk that up for not being what I expected that note to be yeah. about. <laughs> I yeah. just happened to notice it. I'm like, it literally looks like my my curtains. All right, I'll hit on my I picks real quick because you know they're both winning, and uh, <laughs> we got some stacks to get to. Okay. Chargers plus four on the road in Chicago. The Bears are so bad. Are I so get, bad. I get that the Chargers no, are bad I too. I just give you credit for every week targeting just the grossest spots and still <laughs> persevering somehow. I'm oh, I usually like plus three road dogs. Uh, this is plus four. There are no plus three road dogs. Uh, the closest was that or Eagles plus one and a half. I'm not touching that one. Uh, but the Chargers could very obviously, of course, lose this game, but they lose in horrifying fashion, which is a, usually a <laughs> field goal or less game. So plus four, I'll take that. What? Why am I wrong? No, it's just, I know they looked horrible, but at least the last seven minutes. When they were down by I, 30 points, yeah. But uh, I'm just I saying. I think it's more about the Chargers. Sometimes the Chargers that, just, just do Charger other, things, yeah. like that goal line sequence last well, week. Well, oh. they would have covered four okay. points, yeah. obviously, And, and one of the scenario, Charger things is end of the year after they lose no, all these ridiculous and, games, they and start being winning. Better, and being better on the road. So yeah. I know yeah. it's just like, 
when is the the Charger trend of reversing yeah. it going to start? Maybe it's this week because things can't get more ridiculous than scoring three game winning touchdowns and then losing the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, they still would have covered if it they were plus four in that True. one. True. Uh, okay. Which they can't think of what that line they, was. It up closed at two and a half, so okay. they also failed to cover on that, Fair. which is Humble hilarious. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, and then I'm actually going away from a spread this time. I'm going over 46 for Bucks Titans. I think the Bucks come back. They're off a of bye, I believe, and they're yes, and they're going to uh, continue to move the ball uh, and maybe not uh, win. They're going to continue to turn it over, of course, which mm-hmm. will only help the Titans. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill uh, looked a good better game. than Marcus Mariota. Threw for yeah, over three hundred yards. Two tuds. They got they got some weapons, even if they might not really look like weapons. Might have been because of who their quarterback spent that entire time. Yeah. So I like the over there. Uh, it's only forty six. So those are my two picks there. Not we will bad. see how they did on Monday. Stacks time. Oh Let's boy. go. Last week, bargain bin. Where are we saving money? Where are we skimping? Where are we trying to cut corners? This week, that check came through. It cleared. <laughs> that heavy money line parlay got you some money back. <laughs> Where are you spending up? Good this week. Where do you treat yourself? It is the all-time splurge stack. So similar categories as we had last week. Number one, you're spending up in DFS or betting play. Two, food or drink that you always spend up on. Three, entertainment can be anything. Whatever. Same answer. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. Again, remember, no free ads, especially to potential competitors. And four, the flex where you can do anything. Julian, we start with you. All right. Um, so I considered a couple of things for either DFS or bets. Um, I I, w- I went with 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 the just betting on the Patriots because they're so machine like in covering, and there's so many different ways to capitalize on them. Whether it's this year with their defense betting team total unders, which have been great despite the Jets' bad beat uh, the first time around. Um, Getting them on live lines, like when well, it was a bad beat on Monday night, just in a different sense. That was sure, a bad beat. <laughs> um, ghosts get yes, yeah, seeing ghosts that was pretty rough. Darnold's not going to live that down for a long time. No, um, that's a different story though. Poor guy. <laughs> but um, like Steve and I were watching that game against the Redskins. Redskins go up seven nothing. Patriots available seven minus seven on the live line in that game. We <laughs> both took like if you just follow Patriots this yeah, the Patriots games this year with how dominant they've been. Different opportunities present itself that are just gonna go <laughs> your way. We were um, yelling across the room what the lines were <laughs> to each other. <laughs> couldn't believe it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, even the other night against the Jets, like that, they were so obviously in control of that game. Yeah. Like I took them minus 140 on the second quarter money line just to win the second quarter, yep. easily win the second quarter. Third quarter, they Le'Veon Bell runs the ball to min- midfield. Oh, the Patriots are minus 125 on the third quarter money line. Turnover, turnover, turnover. <laughs> yeah. Just bet on the Patriots in as many ways as you yep. can. Food. Here we go. This was an easy one. Lobster roll. Oh, it's good. Bucks forgot it. No, that was what I had. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes. Okay. I got to redo all my stuff. Um, huge, lo- huge lobster roll guy um, anywhere, in, anywhere in New England. Um, great pay up spot. I go, I spend a lot of time in Newport, Rhode Island. Are you saying that too? No. Oh, okay. You already guessed agree. what mine was. Spend Mine's, a lot of time in oh, Newport, Rhode Island. Island. They have a lot of great spots that I enjoy. If you're if you're paying up, lobster roll. Um, We're like the same person. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> the sad realization when you find out that's true. Same taste in curtains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so for entertainment, uh, I was I was gonna go with what I do for cheap entertainment, which is also expensive entertainment, which is the new establishment in town yes. that that Bukes and yep. I so often go to. But I didn't want to do quit. I didn't want to do that. So. Oh. So I, fi- I figured I used it as my affordable spot, and Bukes would have it as his pay-up spot, so I wouldn't make it my pay-up spot. I just went with parlays here in general because that's how you hit it big, even though I say parlays are for suckers when Bukes goes with all the underdogs parlays. I do the heavy favorites parlays, but if you ever have an underdog that's going to pay out, you put it in a parlay. That's how you hit it big. Flex is just a trip in general, a place that you go. It's Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm. I, don't, I have a very gambling heavy stack here. Um, while I eat <laughs> while I eat lobster rolls and bet, that would be just where I spend all my money. Um, yeah, 
I feel like it's a good time to say that, ladies and gentlemen, the odds and lines <laughs> are subject to change. Please see website for actual odds. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and would like some help, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Now, I'm kind of curious. So, Bukes has been talking a lot about Julian's shirt, and Ed L- and Julian never turned around and said, Bukes, what are you wearing? What is this shirt? It's literally just Frankenstein, like a face of Frankenstein. Bukes has a lot of weird shirts. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with the shirt? <laughs> It's, it's just not, weird, like, hey, I, I want that t-shirt. Time here. Okay, okay, so one second. So I'm being criticized for wearing, like, a pop culture shirt. We got a <laughs> guy. Shirt was from the Hold on. 40s. Hold on. 50s. We, we got 60s. a guy wearing a curtain, this and we got another guy with a blue plaid shirt and a yellow undershirt. And I'm the one being matching. criticized. Great color matching. For those, First of all, this is a those, class. To the for those not watching, hey, I'm hey, just wearing hey. a gray hoodie. It's a curtain. First of all, this is a classic horror movie. It is October. It is almost Halloween. It's with the time frame. So, so next Monday, which will be closer to Halloween when we do a show, yeah. are you going to like dress up? I've already talked to Matt about it. <laughs> Great. So there you go. There's a tease. Yeah, my my guess is it's either Lenny Moore or Andrew Kashner, but <laughs> yeah. maybe that's what Julian and I will do. <laughs> oh, do your stack, because I got to think about ones, because this dummy took half of my stack. <laughs> he really didn't, though. But anyways, all right, so I'll do mine uh, right now while Bukes uh, does his research for once on a stack. Uh, <laughs> out the nose. I think we got it out the nose. Might all right. Been. <laughs> but I got the spray. I'm in the spray radius. All right. My DFS betting payup is uh, sounds bad saying it after last night, but it was Garrett Cole throughout the regular season. <laughs> Paid up for that guy every single time. No one touched his upside for two years now. My food or drink, if you know me in the slightest, this will come as absolutely no shock. It is um, the great drink that we call wine in Vino Veritas. Uh, I spend quite a bit of my paycheck on uh, what I call the the nectar of the gods. Um, Would love nothing more to just spend the rest of my life walking around vineyards, so it is wine. Entertainment. Uh, For me, this is a little different now because my kid is a little bit older, uh, but I do have a daughter who is one as well. I always buy the extra seat at a game or anything when it comes, even sometimes airplanes, like kids ride free or kids get mm. in free if they're under a certain age. Usually my kids are under a certain age. However, my son just turned three. And he's the size of like a six-year-old, so he's not sitting on my lap. He's getting the seat. <laughs> my daughter soon will be getting the seat as well. I will pay the extra for that. I don't care. Uh, my flex is sneakers as well. Um, I feel mm. like Julian and I, I are kind of on that, on that line. Yeah, I got some nice. It was raining today, so I couldn't really go all yeah, out. got to go basic. Um, but, yep. Uh, that's that's been a that's been a tough habit to kick. I mean, I actually think I've kind of kicked it. Uh, deleting a couple apps has has certainly helped. But uh, sneakers I'm actually in shocked. general, what's that? I'm shocked. I was I did expecting not go your watches. flex to be watches. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but I'm not wearing a watch today, so that would have just been. Mm. I, I I can't you Fraud. know say one thing and do another. All, All right. right, let's hear it, Bucks. Let's hear how you pay up for pop culture T-shirts. <laughs> You know what? There's going to be a lot of people who watch this. <laughs> no. Like, that, there's not. That like the shirt. There's. They will. I mean, no. This, the, the sentence of there's going to be a lot of people who watch this is just patently false. I mean. No matter what. W- we present this to investors. we got to <laughs> boost the numbers. All right. Fair. DFS Shout out to my bet. brother-in-law, Theo. New, new fan of the show. Hi, Theo. It. Great. Wants All right. Welcome, hit, Theo. Wants to hit that at well establishment <laughs> with you guys the next time he's in town. DFS bet. I like doing underdog parlays <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> julian only gives me crap about this but you know what they hit pretty often i gave you one a couple weeks ago you didn't take it i hit it was in the midst of your cold streak and you i hit on me. both of those bets though i just didn't parlay them so you, 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 you should have it would have came out great in hindsight yes i should have food and drink you know what i don't care i'm doing the lobster roll i don't give a crap that's my answer you stole it like, you want to know something that's the only lobster that's better than a lobster roll? Fried lobster bites. What? That sounds disgusting. Where do those come from? Amazing. Newport Lobster Shack. Let's Maybe we'll get them to sponsor a, a show. We'll take They're really out. good. Where do you get that? I don't tell me. Newport Lobster Shack. Oh, okay. Entertainment. They also have amazing lobster rolls. You can get them both if you really want to pay. And up. then you really go, the, and then the, the lobster roll three way. Is where you really you smear <laughs> that, like that, that barbecue mayo, sauce, that mayo and cheese on there. Hold on, now we're hold talking. 
Decadence. Come, come on the TV right now if you know what a three-way is. Thank you. There they are. <laughs> Cody knows what it is. Axel, Axel has no clue. Producer Axel. Shout Producer out Axel. Producer Axel. And you have to stop asking people if they know what a three-way is. <laughs> like, you just have to phrase that differently. All three ways are great. <laughs> Some might say it is asinine. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Entertainment. There's a new establishment in Everett, Massachusetts. <laughs> the whole just, point was so you could pick different ones. That's why I went, I, and you I'm picked sorry. no different ones. But he, he didn't take that. He I, said he I literally, to like, at, while we've been talking, got an email from them inviting yeah. me in. Yeah, it's a, make my NFL picks, uh, a room discount, which I don't need because <laughs> I live next door. But <laughs> Wow, just tell everybody where you Guys, we're learn. talking about a fast food chain. I don't know what you're talking about. Flex. It's more of like a generic thing. I am so, such an impulsive buyer. For example, one of my favorite bands of all time. Do I time. have to do the odds and lines <laughs> disclaimer again? Why? Such an impulse. Anyways, continue. Sorry. Uh, one of my favorite bands of all time is coming to Foxborough. Guns N' Roses. The original Guns N' Roses. They are getting them all up there? They had them all up there. This has already happened. Went by. Oh, how was it? Amazing. I had to be in the front. Didn't really see what the price was. After we checked out, it was $1,200 for three tickets. <laughs> Wow. Yep. New iPhone comes out. Do I really need it? Eh, probably not. It's in my pocket. Should I have bought it? Probably not. Mm. Did I buy it? Yep. <laughs> so impulsive buying is my flex. Wow. Things I don't need. That's a nice pivot off of Slate's Shouts value out. of like his iPhone 2 that he yeah. still has. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shouts out to you, though, for actually bringing up the number because I thought someone was going to ask me about the on the wine side, and that's uh, – I think it's a scary number on your end. I think it far <laughs> exceeds my twelve hundred dollars on Guns N' Roses tickets. Yep. If we're talking a three pack, yes. A three way. <laughs> uh well. <laughs> That'll do it Wine for helps every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. We're about to go off the rails. You guys yep. buy your your wine you, you and concert tickets. Through, no. I'm heading to Vegas. You need to try the three way at the roast beef establishment by your by your building it's across the street you won't it is. be let it's, down it's on my walk over you to go, the, you knock uh, on the bathroom Bonk door boston harbor go there and say <laughs> at the Hello. right time look, ask for sea bass <laughs> <laughs> go there say i would like a large roast beef on an uh, or just roast beef on an Put it on buck's three way. yeah whatever i'll buy it for you cheap bastard you, right. <laughs> you can't even get here on time probably don't have a lot of money because <laughs> Jesus. I Uber. I Ubered today. I I actually spent up on on spend up day and uh, worked out terribly. Well, it was amazing because this office is full of people who were able to get here on time. Just yep. you. Such Just a me. weird route you take. Yep, yep. Wrap up the show. Yes. Slept from like three to seven. Folks, folks this is <laughs> wait till this next is going to do it. <clears throat> this is going to do it for the Panel B podcast. Potentially just for this episode. Potentially ever for all future episodes. We shall see. For Julian Edlow. For Stephen Buchanan, mm-hmm. I'm Alex Shankowski, and maybe we will see you next time. I hope so.